Hi, Mr. Suresh Narayan now joins us, uh, Chairman Managing Director of Nestle India, to talk about uh, the way forward for the economy, Nestle, and how exactly Nestle has managed to convert this crisis into an opportunity. Uh, Mr. Narayan, always a pleasure to have you back on ET Now. Thank you for joining us. Let me first start with uh, your view on the economy. Somewhere are you stunned with the resilience, with the comeback, with the whole uh, demand uh, visibility which is now there in every sector, from electricity consumption to fuel consumption, from FMCG sector to the car demand. Uh, economy is back on track, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Nikunj. Thank you for having me on the show. Uh, yes, indeed. Indeed, the, the, the trajectory of the FMCG industry has been, has been extremely heartening. I mean, as we discussed uh, the last time we, when we met, uh, I think the consumer goods industry has probably been, uh, it has been one of the least impacted uh, industries uh, in terms of the overall uh, economy. You know, there are others which are hurting and which, are, which have been decimated in this, uh, in this pandemic. And I think to that extent, uh, it once again reinforces uh, the inherent strength of the consumption story in India. Uh, you know, I always believe this, Nikunj, that irrespective of the fact that we might have had a GDP contraction of minus 24%, and irrespective of the fact that uh, in the subsequent quarters, we will only be building back towards where we were uh, to reach the 2019 levels uh, in, the financial, uh, in, the, in the fiscal year that we are talking about. But the fact of the matter is, is that I believe that consumption would still be uh, relatively uh, strong and robust. It may go up and down. I mean, that's that's more a matter of, of, of degree. But the secular trend line will still remain upwards. Let's talk about the raw material uh, uh, scenario. How exactly do you think raw material prices, milk, sugar, other things are likely to move for Nestle? Now, there are two factors which are at play, clearly. One the APMC reforms have kicked in and B, there seems to be a recovery in uh, rural India. Now, you are a company which is dependent on raw, your, your margins, let me put it this way, are completely dependent on raw material uh, volatility. So, what is your view forward on uh, where the raw material prices are headed? Look, uh, I think as far as as far as APMC is concerned, <coughs> and, and the agri reforms are concerned, I think uh, these are absolutely the step in the in the, in the right direction. And I believe that uh, that uh, longer term, uh, these are the kind of policy measures that we need to take in order to ensure that there is a, a freedom for the for the farmer and for the farming community uh, to sell uh, to the entities that they believe will give them the best realization. Obviously, there is still uh, the debate on, on whether they need a certain minimum support level, and that's where I think the, 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 entire, uh, the entire economic and political debate is, 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 is uh, taking place. Now, as far as, as far as Nestle is concerned, you know, uh, you know, we, we really have uh, three or four major uh, commodities that, uh, that, uh, that impact us. One of them is milk. Uh, milk is, uh, is, is not uh, an APMC item or not, is not an item that goes to the mundis of any kind. And there, I believe that uh, the model that has been uh, set uh, largely due to the cooperatives, and I think here the cooperative movement has done a tremendous job, and also some private players like us, like, like Nestle, have set, a, uh, set up a very fair, transparent, robust, and time-tested mechanism, uh, which I believe will carry on. And uh, at the moment, uh, the way we look at uh, milk prices is, 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 it, is, it, is it, it is fairly benign. Uh, the good part is that some of the demand that had vanished uh, from the out of home segment and from the catering segment has started to come back. So milk prices will start to firm up a bit, but uh, nevertheless, they will not be uh, at, the, at, at, at the very uh, highly escalated rates uh, that they were in the past. Uh, wheat uh, is also one of our, our, our commodities. I think, I think there again, uh, a lot of uh, benefit uh, has, has come by way of better crops. I uh, believe the common procurement has been high. The curry crop is also looking forward to be a fairly robust uh, crop. Uh, that means that uh, possibly, even uh, despite the, uh, the relatively high food inflation, uh, this would also remain uh, relatively under control. It will not, I mean, all this would be in a, in a, in a certain margin, Nikoj, but uh, they won't really upset the apple cart uh, enormously. Uh, the third one is, of course, sugar. And sugar, uh, we know that, uh, that uh, there has been a relative uh, benign nature of this. There has not been too much of a surge happening on the, on, the, on, the, on, the, on the sugar front. And the other are, of course, things like oils, where, again, 
uh, there has been relative uh, stability. So from an overall commodity perspective, while I agree with you that the level of inflation, overall in inflation uh, is still higher than what we are used to, uh, I believe that the overall basket will still be a manageable uh, set of, uh, of uh, <clears throat> circumstances uh, that we should be able to, uh, to tide over as a company. Margins have also gone up. Now, how much of your margins, which are now nearing almost 25%, is a function of cost-cutting initiatives, cut in advertising spends, which you adopted during the pandemic time, uh, and how much of your uh, uh, and how much of the margin expansion has largely come because of efficiency and pricing power? Look, I think I think uh, as a company, we op <coughs> we operate on on three uh, spectrums. One is, of course. Uh, the commodity cost mitigation that we do uh, with economies of scale, better productivity, uh, stocking opportunities, etc. So a part of it uh, is clearly uh, due to uh, due to uh, due to uh, that. Uh, we also have, apart from the uh, the, uh, the commodity uh, uh, price headwinds or tailwinds, uh, as the case may be, we also have a fairly robust uh, cost containment program. And uh, this is not just the one-off costs that we are looking at. In the pandemic, you know, lower travel, lower conferencing, uh, and, and and stuff like that. Uh, we also look at at, at, at other process costs uh, to see that uh, we are able to uh, to to have a trajectory, a downward trajectory over a period of time uh, that is uh, beneficial uh, in terms of the overall uh, trajectory of uh, volumes and value that uh, that we that we record uh, from from uh, from time to time. And uh, uh, if these two are really uh, unable to 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 hold uh, the commodity surge that might take place. Uh, that is where the the brand and pricing uh, related issues uh, come to play. Uh, because uh, you would remember, um, uh, Nikunj, the strategy that we have set forth, and I think one of the things I'm extremely proud of is that in the last five years we've tried to maintain the consistency uh, and simplicity of the business model, which is uh, penetration led volume growth, which is uh, hinging on uh, innovation, renovation, uh, both price points and uh, and uh, um, uh, the uh, premium uh, part of the portfolio uh, doing its uh, doing its bit. Uh, strong digital uh, engagements, uh, strong engagements as far as uh, distribution infrastructure is concerned, and a combination of all this is is what has led to a sustained performance. I mean. Uh, uh, apart from the last quarter, if you look at the, the previous quarter, which was probably the only quarter where we had a slightly muted performance of 2.6%, the previous 10 quarters has been straight double digit. So I think I think this model seems to be working for us and uh, we don't want to disturb it uh, too much under the circumstances. Double digit gr growth is back for Nestle. Is it here to stay? Can I safely assume that given the kind of outlook you're sharing both in terms of uh, penetration and how market share gains are happening. Double digit growth is here to stay for Nestle in the medium term. You see, uh, we will we will strive certainly. I mean, I don't I don't give you uh, forward indications, Nikoj. That's not the policy of the company, and neither would I be uh, be wanting to 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 make such a statement. But certainly, penetration led volume growth uh, will be a centerpiece of whatever, uh, whatever we will do. The second piece is that we will sell uh, those categories and, those and, 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 and come up with those initiatives, uh, which are not margin dilutive to us either. So uh, we would not be really going in for those initiatives, which are what I call empty calorie initiatives, uh, that just uh, selling a lot of uh, uh, NPS and not really having uh, too much of, uh, of, uh, of a residual value in terms of uh, value to the company. You're looking at investing about 2,000 crore plus in the next couple of years, two to three years. Where would you be investing? Would you be looking at adding more uh, categories or would you be looking at uh, extending your current categories? Yeah, I think, I think uh, it's, uh, it's two things, uh, Nikunj. One is it is, a, it is a statement of confidence in the future of Nestle in India. I think that's something that I would really like to highlight. I think that's an important statement. Uh, we compete for investment dollars with China, with, with ASEAN, with the uh, rest of the world. Uh, and therefore, when we get these investments, it means 
uh, that the business case that uh, that uh, that we are able to exhibit from track record and from a prospect in India is fairly strong. That is number one. Uh, number two is 99% uh, of what I sell in India is made in India. So very well and truly, when we talk about make in India, this company has been embracing it from 1961 when the first factory of Nestle at Moga uh, came up. So in the eight factories that we have today, uh, what we produce is the 99% of what I sell in this uh, in this country. Uh, number three is that uh, the 2,600 crores, uh, 26 billion, which comes after the previous uh, surge that we had between 2009 and 2013 of about 33 billion. Uh, we'd go behind the factory in Sanand, and the factory in Sanand is, I'm happy to inform you, Nikunj, is coming up quite well. Uh, you know, it had a little bit of a setback during the pandemic, but now it has come back. It's coming back. Construction is on. Uh, and we and we look at this as being our most digitally savvy factory, a paperless factory, environmentally the most friendly factory, uh, the most diverse factory, 50% of, of, uh, of the workforce would be women. And we look at it as a modern uh, uh, temple of manufacturing uh, dedicated to food processing in India. So I think I really look at it as, a, as an important uh, initiative for the company and also a contribution to the country. Uh, apart from, uh, from the uh, Sanand factory, there are expansions in capacity. So these are not uh, either uh, compliance related or indeed uh, any other uh, infrastructure related. These are capacity building measures in our factory in Nanjungot for the, for, the, for the coffee business. Uh, for in Ponda for our chocolate and confectionery business, and uh, in the in the milks and nutrition business in our facilities in Sawal and in Moga. Uh, so therefore, this is across the board, across categories, uh, and therefore that's also the other other uh, story of the company that we are looking at secular growth across categories, and it is not just a milk and nutrition company or a Maggi company or a Kit Kat company. I think it is a secular nature of the brands the resonance and the ramifications uh, that we are looking at over a period of time. You know, while Nestle's mantra is premiumization, growth, also uh, move up the value chain, some would argue that the challenge is that India's per capita is not moving higher. While it's aspirational to talk about we will buy better cars, better smartphones, we will buy uh, better experiential gadgets, uh, if the per capita is not moving up, there is going to be a challenge in all the categories. Could that be an impediment for Nestle's plan to premiumize categories? Look, I think you know I don't I can't comment about cars or mobile phones and the aspirations there. But one of the things, uh, Nikunj, which is happening, and uh, I mean I, I really call it the uh, the the hero of the pandemic, is really the surge of demand for trustworthy, good quality, good nutrition, uh, and, uh, and uh, uh, safe products coming out of uh, the Bharat, as we call it. So the tier two, tier three towns, and the tier four towns, and the rural markets are actually asking for better quality and, and, and safer products. Uh, I don't know whether it is as a consequence of the pandemic, or indeed, there has been a journey towards better brands and better consumption, at least in the consumer goods space. So uh, I see this as a very positive trend. Uh, consumers today across the country, including smaller towns and in rural areas, are asking for brands which are safer, which are more nutritious, uh, which have got uh, uh, offerings in terms of better immunity, uh, better longer term uh, outcomes for their families, and they are willing to pay a certain premium for it. Yes. Uh, it may not be a, a complete strategy that you would call that shifting the entire market into a majority uh, premium uh, portfolio, but definitely there are there are opportunities uh, based on consumer trends that we are seeing. And indeed, you see this not just in the in the food space; you also see it in a lot of other consumer goods space as well. Hmm. Also wanted to understand that what is your experience in the shift which is happening in the unorganized category versus organized category. Are you benefiting largely because of this? A pandemic has ensured that uh, big companies, they gain market share and the importance of distribution and brand really is now evident. How has that benefited a company like Nestle in some of the categories where you already have a dominant market share like baby food or even noodles? 
Well, I think I think one of the things, uh, Nikul, and this has been true before the pandemic, as indeed it will be true after the pandemic. Uh, I think regional competitors and uh, small uh, players are uh, definitely going to to to, to benefit uh, from the surge in the in the packaged goods uh, uh, market, certainly for foods. I mean, by all estimates, uh, today a thirty-five billion dollar market of uh, branded packaged foods in this country is likely to double in the next couple of years. Now, whether that happens in the next two to three years or three to four years, depending on the economic outcome, the fact is that, is that the branded packaged uh, industry is going to grow quite well. The, all the beneficiaries of this, most certainly, are not going to be just the big players. And in fact, when I invest something like 2,600 crores uh, in the business, uh, there is a multiplier effect, Nikunj, as you know very well, and in foods, and that's why I'm excited about the food processing industry. The multiplier effect is anywhere between two to four, as, as globally established, which means that there will be additional suppliers created, additional logistics created, uh, additional services created, and some of these additional uh, suppliers created will also uh, look at coming up with their own brands, coming up with their own propositions, and indeed uh, team up with other smaller players regionally. So. It is very well possible that uh, that uh, the the surge in in packaged goods that will take place, uh, there will be a beneficiary of uh, ethically straight, good quality, good value, and longer term players, uh, albeit small, but if they do this on a on a consistent basis, they do have a place under the sun, and they will be beneficiaries of this. And I think that is good for India because we need, uh, as you know, in India we need more number of uh, medium and 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 large enterprises to grow as compared to most of the most of the other peer company uh, peer countries in the world and i think this would be a good way of doing it and that's where the production linked incentives that have been announced by the government where food processing is also a beneficiary uh, i look forward to, to 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 reading more details about it because it will be good for the country this is what will create the kind of employment footprint and the opportunity for, uh, footprint for entrepreneurs in this country what are the chances that Nestle is also thinking on the lines of not only made in India for India, but made in India for others? You've been championing that food processing is a great area where India should focus on. Is Nestle looking on similar lines where you want to use India's uh, infrastructure, abundance of milk uh, and convert that into a big uh, you know, export hub? hub? I think I think one of the compelling cases for food processing, and I've been I've been shouting this from the rooftops whenever I get the opportunity, is very high. We are the world's biggest producer of milk, 176 billion tons. Uh, we are the second biggest uh, in terms of uh, cereals. Uh, we are the second biggest in terms of fruits and vegetables. Today, the conversion into 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 processed products is just about 10 percent. The kind of food waste that we have in the country, uh, raw material waste, is about 92,000 crores. So. Uh, one and a half billion dollars is is what we are we are putting as as clearly as waste. So if there is one sector which can benefit from the conversion of abundant raw material into processed products and into consumable products, it is a food processing industry. And yes, for Nestle, about five percent of our turnover comes from uh, from exports, and this is really playing to not only uh, other countries in South Asia but also thirty to forty countries across the world. There is a surge, uh, there is a demand for uh, what I call Indian ethnic foods. I mean, the fact of the matter is, is that a lot of uh, youngsters who went to the US or went to UK uh, to study or to Canada to study at universities, uh, they carried uh, with them, uh, you know, two T-shirts, two jeans and 18 kilos of baggie. And the fact is that when they go there, settle themselves, they still want the taste of India. And I think it's, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, go it's good for them. Uh, to to get a brand like like Maggie available there, so in every sense uh, there will be greater opportunities for this uh, as we go forward. When we spoke last, you spoke about there are some distribution challenges because of COVID. Obviously, uh, have the challenges got completely uh, settled? When you look back, where do you think the COVID surprise has come from Nestle, and where the COVID disappointment has come from Nestle? Look, I think I think uh, you know uh, what I've been what I've been surprised by is the kind of uh, uh, of uh, quick shift that consumers have made, uh, especially across channels. I mean, the kind of the kind of e-commerce surge that has taken place uh, has been truly heartening. I mean, it has been it has been enormous. 
you know, our own business from about 1% of, of, of contribution is up to 3.5% uh, in just one year flat. This might have taken us a couple of years to, to, to build up to. So I think the consumer's capability and flexibility uh, to shift in the circumstances uh, to a shopping opportunity that is relevant for him or her uh, is extremely high. And I think that is a, that is a very, very uh, good, uh, 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 good lesson that has come out of the pandemic. Equally, uh, the kind of, of, of uh, buoyancy as far as the humble uh, Kirana store is concerned, the humble Dukan is concerned, which is really where my heart is uh, because I've been, I've been trained and I've been nurtured in that, uh, is also been very, very uh, heartening that, uh, that uh, small retail has also got a big role to play uh, in the post-COVID uh, world in terms of access, in terms of assortment, in terms of, uh, uh, in terms of servicing, et cetera, et cetera. I think, I think those, those definitely are the really heartening positive stories uh, that have uh, come out of it. Uh, I think in terms of uh, in terms of uh, disappointments, I really don't have any 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 major uh, disappointments as far as the consumer journey is concerned because uh, the consumer has wisely chosen uh, credible brands, trustworthy brands, safe brands, asking for better nutrition, asking for better value. Uh, I think the the disappointment has been to some extent has been the real serious meltdown of the auto form, and I think that is really tragic, and, and I think that is that is something that will take time. Uh, to build back because that was a substantive part of the business, uh, not not really necessarily of Nestle, but of many other entities. And that, unfortunately, will take some time to build back uh, to what it was uh, in, in, uh, in, in the pre-COVID days. Just to wrap it up a question. Now, Nestle has a dominant market share in a lot of categories, whether it is baby food or for that matter, Kit Kat or even, uh, uh, you know, even... Uh, in the category of uh, milk, how are you ensuring that your dominance and your relevance remains intact? Because if there is relevance, your top line will grow of dominance, then you clearly will have huge advantage in terms of return on equity and other return ratios. I am I'm a little uncomfortable, um, uh, Nico, with the word dominance. I don't think any company has got the right uh, to, 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 to be dominant. I think a company has got uh, every uh, every every uh, kind of effort uh, that it needs to do to be relevant and resonant. I think if I am relevant and resonant in terms of what I have to offer uh, as brands, if I am trustworthy, if I am credible, if I am ethical, and if I have offer fair value for the money that I, I expect the consumer to uh, to to shell out, and I have uh, enough armory in terms of research, development, technological capabilities, and channel and marketing capabilities to be able to, to, to market it to you. Uh, I think that is the only right that a company has. Uh, dominance, whether it happens or it does not happen, is a consequence of all of this. And I would rather get myself and my team uh, to be humbled by the service that we do for consumers rather than to be, to be, to be, uh, to, to be swayed uh, by the arrogance of the word dominance. All right. Um, thank you uh, so much for joining us this morning. Uh, Suresh Narayan there of uh, Nestle uh, speaking to us on the way forward.